गुड मॉर्निंग डियर स्टूडेंट्स आई एम प्रोफेसर कुमार स्वामी हियर अगेन फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जोलॉजी सो इन दैट लास्ट लास्ट क्लास आई हैव एक्सप्लेन यू अबाउट द सिलेबस दैट यू आर हैविंग फॉर दिस एंटायर कोर्स ऑफ बी एस सी सी बी जेड कॉम्बिनेशन पर्टिकुलरली अबाउट जोलॉजी सिलेबस होप दैट यू आर अवेयर अबाउट द सिलेबस वॉट यू आर सपोज टू स्टडी Uh, in this bsc zoology uh let me start the first chapter about animal architecture the topic title uh in this chapter the sub topics are as follows body symmetry body organization coelom metamorphism and a brief note on cephalization after this you will have to study in detail about principles of animal classification and there are many things to be studied under this principles of animal classification let me start with the chapter animal architecture there are different levels of organization in organisms in animals in particular the levels of organization in organismal complexity there are five major grades of organization each being more complex than the previous basically the following types of levels of organizations are seen in animals the first being protoplasmic level it occurs in unicellular organisms here organelles within the cell carry out specialized functions as you know that in case of protozoans uh, they do have only one single cell in their whole body and the protoplasm that is a living substance present inside their cells Uh, and their organelles will perform different functions hence the body organization is referred to as protoplasmic level so examples protozoans only second type cellular level as the name itself suggests here cells are aggregated and cells engage in a division of labor being specialized for particular tasks example colonial protozoan groups with distinct somatic and reproductive cells and then sponges show this cellular level of body organization the third type of body organization is cell tissue level here similar cells aggregate into patterns or layers forming tissues example nerve net in cnidarians or coelenterates so as the name itself suggests here there is no formation of an organ yet so all the body functions are carried out through tissue level only then comes the fourth type tissue organ level here tissues have organized together to form organ and organs are made up of more than one type of tissue and have a specialized function example flatworms which have organs like eye spots then comes the last type of body organization organ system level here organs work together to perform functions it is the most complex level of organization majority of the animals exhibit this type of body level of organization example the different systems like circulatory digestive respiratory excretory and reproductive systems now let me go through the symmetry as you know that in case of animals there are different types of symmetry because the shape of this body of these animals are different so they certainly exhibit different types of symmetry so symmetry basically refers to 
द मोड ऑफ अरेंजमेंट ऑफ द डिफरेंट बॉडी ऑर्गन्स ऑन आइदर साइड्स ऑफ द मेन एक्सिस ऑफ द बॉडी सो देर आर थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ सीमेट्री आर सीन जनरली इन एनिमल्स दे आर स्पेरिकल रेडियल एंड बाइलैटरल एंड एज यू ऑब्जर्व इन दिस स्लाइड द फर्स्ट डायग्राम इट इज विथ रेफरेंस टू द रेडियल सॉरी द स्पेरिकल सीमेट्री and the second diagram it uh, shows radial symmetry and the third diagram it shows bilateral symmetry the spherical symmetry in this type of symmetry the body of such animals can be cut in one plane passing through the center into two equal or mirrored halves example protozoans and this is rarely seen in other animal groups second type radial symmetry here the body can be cut into similar halves passing through longitudinal axis it is rarely seen and it has two sub types that is biradial and pentaradial symmetry example sponges coelenterates and echinoderms then bilateral symmetry it is the most common type of symmetry found in majority of the animals it is strongly associated with cephalization that is the formation of heterohyoid with sensory and feeding apparatus in this type the body can be cut into two equal halves only along one plane passing through the center of median longitudinal axis example all other animals except above so this slide it shows you clearly about the different types of symmetry seen in different animals uh, the first animal is beetle and that shows bilateral symmetry so where you can see uh, there is a dotted line that is shown in the center longitudinal axis and on either sides of that median line the different body organs are arranged equally then comes the second type that is radial symmetry so this is the diagram of a polyp a coelenterate which shows uh, the radial symmetry the dotted lines show that uh, this type of animals can be cut into two equal halves passing through the central median axis on any plane then the last animal it is with reference to a sponge and as you observe there there is no definite symmetry here so this type of symmetry is called asymmetry normally sponges exhibit this type of asymmetry so this slide is about the descriptive terms that are used to describe the orientation in bilateral animals uh first let me tell you about that two ends that can be seen in the body of an animal showing bilateral symmetry that is an anterior end and posterior end there will be two surfaces like dorsal and ventral surface and there are different planes by which we can cut the body of these animals uh that is transverse plane uh, dorsal sorry transverse plane a frontal plane and sagittal plane coming to body coelom you know coelom is basically refers to a body cavity or a space so it can be defined as the space between the body wall and gut wall lined by mesodermal epithelium or peritoneum nature of the coelom varies depending on the embryonic history and evolutionary status the first cavity to appear in the embryonic development of all sexually reproducing multicellular animals is blastocil which is also called primary body cavity in diploblastic animals the blastocil gets obliterated with the formation of archenteron or the so called gastrocil during which the primary germ layers like ectoderm and endoderm are formed 
and there is the accumulation of mesenchyme or mesoglia between them and it is generally observed that all diploblastic animals are said to be <coughs> are said to be having this type of uh, body condition then in triploblastic animals the third layer mesoderm is formed between ectoderm and endoderm in mesoderm a space appears by splitting of mesoderm or coelomic sacs and this space is called true coelom or secondary body cavity the mesodermal band lying inner to the body wall is called somatic or parietal mesoderm and the lying and the one which lying outer to the body wall is called splanchnic mesoderm every organ that projects into the coelom is lined by peritoneum and is connected to other organs by sheet composed of double layer of peritoneum called mesentery if an organ does not project into coelom then the peritoneum covers the inner surface of that organ facing the coelom such an organ is said to be retroperitoneal coming to the types of coelom triploblastic animals exhibit three types of coelom a coelom pseudo coelom and u coelom coming to a coelom in this type the space between the body wall is filled with solid mass of mesoderm or parenchyma thus there is no cavity or coelom and such animals are called a coelomate animals example platyhelminthes second type pseudo coelom or blastro coelom in this type the primary body cavity called blastocoel persist between the digestive tube and body wall hence the coelom is described as pseudo coelom as you know that pseudo refers to false so hence it is also called false body cavity such animals are called pseudo coelomate animals example nematodes so nematodes exhibit exclusively this pseudo coelom condition coming to the third type u coelom in this type the space between the body wall and gut wall is lined by mesodermal epithelium or peritoneum such animals are called u coelomate animals here the visceral organs are suspended in the coelom by mesenteries example annelids to chordates so it is very clear that u coelom is the most advanced type of coelom present in animals this u coelom is of two types based on the origin that is cyzo coelom and entero coelom first is cyzo coelom if the coelom develops as a result of mesodermal splitting then it is called cyzo coelom example annelids arthropods molluscans which are collectively known as proterostomes second type entero coelom if the coelom develops as the result of outpushing of archenteron then it is called entero coelom example echinoderms and chordates which are collectively called deuterostomes so this slide is explaining you uh, the <coughs> diagrammatic explanation of the different types of coelom wherein the first uh, diagram shows a coelomate condition wherein the outermost layer of the body wall is ectoderm and the innermost layer is endoderm in between which there is mesoderm and in the core part or the central part there will be gastric cavity or the gut cavity or the digestive cavity here there is no coelom at all hence the condition is called a coelomate condition whereas in the second diagram it explains you about uh, the nature of u coelom wherein you can clearly see the presence of a space between the gut wall and the body wall what is known as coelom coming to the third type that is pseudo coelomate condition 
as you observe in the diagram clearly that the ectoderm between the ectoderm and endoderm there will be a mesoderm inner to which in the core part there will be a digestive cavity and between the endoderm and that of the body uh, sorry the gut wall you can see a, a space which is said to be a false cavity or pseudocoelom because it is not lined by a peritoneum coming to origin of coelom there is a close correlation between the origin of coelom and formation of mesoderm there are four theories to explain the origin of coelom the first one being enterocoel theory it is the most primitive theory according to this theory the mesodermal outpushings are identical phylogenetically the occurrence of gonads in the walls of gastric pockets corresponds with the location of gonads in the coelomic wall of coelomates second theory is about gonocoel theory and it is the most popular theory of coelomic origin it was proposed by hashchek berg lang and ernst meyer it considers that the coelom as an expanded gonad third one is nephrocoel theory it was proposed by zeigler according to this theory the main function of coelom is excretory and the coelom represents the expanded inner end of a nephridium also the excretory ducts communicate with the coelom the last one being cytosil theory according to this theory the coelom was originally formed by splitting of mesoderm that is by cytosilus method the spaces appeared in the mesoderm due to the accumulation of a fluid of excretory nature and such spaces led to the formation of coelom so these are the theories with reference to origin of coelom thank you stay home and stay safe in the next class let me explain you about the other part of this chapter thank you